come back for you. Come on, come with me. <laughs> it's like country file. <laughs> Well, what a fantastic week it's been you know one of those weeks that you really look forward to is the culmination of, of lots of little projects and lots of things that you look forward to throughout the year um, so what I'm going to do is kick off with a little bit of news of what's happening what's been happening this week got a bit of a Q&A slot as well for you and then to finish off just a little bit of a snippet from Fairy Meadows because that's where my weekend is going to be spent so we'll kick off with a little bit of news Right, I've just been in touch with Nigel at Boston Lakes. Next week is their annual um, festival. Three-day competition, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the following day is obviously Saturday, and that's the Saturday of the Boston Bowl, which is the big annual event that they have there at Boston. I've just found out there are two places left on that festival, so if anybody's interested, I'll put the link below for you. That'll just enable you to book on and just see what it's all about and all that sort of thing. So... It looks set to be a fantastic competition again. I've never had a chance to fish it myself. It's a 60 peg sellout. Well, it will be a sellout, I'm sure. Like I said, there are two places left. A couple of people have had to drop out. So I'll put the link below for you. Um, so, yeah, just check that out if you're interested in that at Boston. Obviously, this week it's been the World Feeder Championships. We've been out in Portugal and... I think I'm just going to cover a little bit of that in the Q&A slot because a lot of the questions I've had this week have really been about um, the World Championships itself. So I'm going to cover that in that little bit. And the big news has been finally the arrival and launch of the Horizon Rods. I know loads of you have been asking about them and you know I've been looking forward to, to these coming out. Just because I know a lot of you people have been waiting to see them and, and try them out and, and, and obviously get your hands on them. So... Finally, it was launched this week, and yeah, it's a cracking range of rods. I've got one here. I can't really show you the full rod. I'm not, unfortunately, I'm, due to work and everything, I haven't been able to get out of the bank this week. So uh, that's the graphics, just to show you that. It's the full range of rods, as you can imagine, to replace the 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 old Horizons and the ones that I, you've seen me use over the last 12 months or so. It's a fantastic range of rods. What I'm going to do is, I'm not going to bang on about them, but I've got to let you know that they are now out. They're out there, but all the selections are tips here. If I'm going to go through this, I really want to do it on the bank for you, just so you can see the action of the rod properly. But for anybody interested, below is a link to the trailer, which gives you all the information about the, uh, you know, the specs of, of each rod, the prices as well. It's all there for you. So, And the way it's presented, I think Craig Butterfield put it together in a fantastic way again really professional and he can do a lot better job than I can at doing something like that so I will get out on the bank with these to show you what they're all about but just for the time being if you are generally interested now link below for you just check them out and please let me know what you think if you've had a chance to see them already Well, a lot of the questions I've been asked really have all stemmed around the World Championships and I can't really give you information about how the lads kind of decided on their final tactics for the Championships weekend. This is probably one of the first times that I've gone and, and, and ran a bank officially on a World Championships when I haven't actually fished the venue myself. I haven't been, I've never seen it before. So how the lads arrived at their final uh, decisions on the way that they were going to approach it on Saturday and Sunday... I honestly can't tell you that because I wasn't there to see it. So, you know, there, you know, please ask them that. I, I can't answer that. But from my point of view, it just kind of hit home again about what it means to be an international angler. You know, things that we sometimes forget about when we're fishing at home here in the UK. Just managing yourself. I mean, the temperatures were, you know, really high this year as well. It was 40 plus degrees during the daytime, and from what I hear, even in even at night time, it hardly dropped as well. So that kind of heat is relentless and it's really, really it's so tiring to manage yourself over a number of days and these are the kind of things that you forget about um, when you're not you know in that international um, circle so that was a massive thing for the lads um, target species barbel um, carp carasio and bleak that just just about sums it up what the lads were targeting you know they were targeting them on different lines with different approaches and um, you know, as regards actual details on tactics, there, you know, 
you're going to be seeing articles that the lads are, are, are writing for their various sponsors and that sort of thing so you're going to see that coming up in far more detail than I can really give you um, and because I'm not I wasn't part of that team that fished I don't really know what you know what kind of bits of information they want me to share with you guys you know um, there's bound to be some things they want to keep back to themselves uh, you know for future championships and I obviously don't want to get involved in that that's that that's for them to tell you if they want to tell you um, the result was obviously disappointing a lot of you know the result now and you know I'm not going to keep banging on about it but um, we, you know we had a great approach we were targeting Barbel on one line carp on another and bleak on a third line that that was really the to put it incredibly simply but that's really what it was um, one or two of the rules kind of kind of just changed the way that you're going to be fishing these international competitions now particularly the ruling on the on the bleak rig with the not you know they actually said that you don't need to fill your feeder when you're casting in now you know slow sinking feeders were allowed to be used and and all that kind of thing kind of puts a different edge on feeder fishing <laughs> as we know it you know and a lot of people obviously agreed with it a lot of people disagreed with it and I don't want to get political on it um, but when rules like that are brought in and made official you've got to deal with it you know you've got to um, either put it into your plan or take it out of your plan and if you are going to do it and adopt these little tweaks then you've got to try and make sure you're going to do it better than all the other teams out there and that's exactly what England you know what, what our team did um, I, I can't really I don't want to ramble on about it I mean one of the key things that I, I've got to show you just because I want to be doing my job is one of the key parts of their kit that they used was as you know because you've seen me using them the dome feeder this was used mainly on, on a line that they probably call their barbell line for feeding quite a bit of hemp uh, where you didn't really want so much ground bait, hemp, a bit of corn um, and, and those feed, all the lads used those feeders um, and, and they were ideal for that sort of thing and just the kind of thing when I've talked about using them before for introducing quite a quantity, quite a large quantity of just freebies uh, of bait and just capping it off with ground bait um, you know the lads use them to great effect um, I'm not going to bang on about it a lot of you know the result anyway and I'm sure you've talked, spoke to some of the anglers anyway but it was a fantastic week really enjoyed it got loads of experience again from it and I can't really go any further than just to say you know we had a bit of bad luck on day one we had to carry two two 18 point scores which out of 22 is it's a mammoth task to pull you know pull yourselves back from that and on day two um we had another big score just to carry but you know the draw didn't help you know that b section was a cruel section to us bottom both days rob was there and dean was there on dean on day two it was a really cruel section draw wise you know a lot of the fish were getting caught on virtually a, a mud line if you want to call it that uh, and the peg that rob drew and the peg that dean drew on day two wouldn't they just weren't able to get onto that line so you know you're looking at one bite one bite would have got england in the medals and that's really how tight it was and you know but that's what it is that's what it is you know we've england have won by small margins before as well so you've just got to take the rough with the small i'm sure they'll come back bigger and stronger next year next year's in italy uh massive well done to italy for winning in case any of you guys are watching um it was great to see a lot of you guys out there the viewers and stuff thanks for coming and saying hello but i've just got to finish on just saying a massive massive well done to mick viles again um, I mean what can you say I mean he's just so consistent at that level I, I, there's not a lot really I can say other than just you know he keeps doing it simple as that and I'm over the moon for Mick I could see how pleased he was and obviously having Ernie his dad there as well is, is, a, is a massive thing I mean going up for a medal like that in a championship like that is, is awesome but to have your family there as well absolute top notch fantastic Mick so consistent it's brilliant mate um, but I know in the Angling Times next week is going to be a full result so that's going to be an Angling Times next week if anyone's interested Lloyd from the Angling, Angling Times was there taking photographs from the England camp as well a little bit of an insider story if you want to call it that so check that out that'll be out next week well this weekend is all about Fairy Meadows I'm there on Saturday for the um, Feeder Masters Super League Round 2 fishing with, with, with my uh, new fish team again this is this is the second round so that's on Saturday and then on Sunday is the feeder masters again but the individual competition it's an individual qualifier 
where I'll be doing everything I possibly can to try and win those 20 pegs to try and uh, book my place in, in, in the final at Bow Beach. So, with Ferry Meadows in mind, here's a little compilation of a few clips from the Feeder Masters qualifier there a couple of weeks ago. Right, well I've drawn at peg five on Overton. No idea where that is. I might even get lost on my way there to be honest because everyone's told me different directions. I think they're doing it on purpose. I don't know if it's that way or that way. I think it's to the right, that's the way I'm gonna go. I'm out of sign. Well, it's a fantastic venue, you know, and it's going to be a really, really challenging weekend, I think it is, both Saturday and Sunday. So, thanks again for watching, really appreciate it. Big hello to everybody who came to say hello last week in Portugal. Um, I've got to finish on a high, just to let a lot of you know, I don't really want to say anything just yet, but um, I know a lot of people want to see longer videos and stuff. I've got another video going on, it's not mine, it's someone else's video, but it's of me fishing. It's just a bit of an insight how I approach um, Larford Lakes and just what kind of happens up here sometimes when I'm in matches. It's an incredibly well edited video because it's not by me. Um, and, but what I'm going to do is tomorrow evening I'll put a link, I'll put a video on here and a link to it for you um, just so you don't miss out on it. But it's in a fantastic video. It's really well shot and edited. And um, like I said, I'll put a link uh, below for you and hopefully you'll enjoy that when that goes live um, tomorrow. So, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. So much coming. I can't even tell you um, what's on the agenda. It's just going to keep banging, banging at you. So please get subscribed up and uh, hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Hope you catch loads unless you're near me at Ferry Meadows, in which case uh, I hope you come second. Have a great weekend.